I'm Lucy Bednell with the ARC of Northern Virginia. This webinar on the nuts and bolts of live-in caregivers is the first in a series of webinars that parallel the information in our live-in caregiver guides. This project was made possible thanks to a grant from the Arlington Community Foundation. In this section, we'll quickly overview what is a live-in caregiver, whether or not this is the same as a live-in aide, how live-in caregivers are paid, and whether or not using a live-in caregiver makes you a landlord, employer, or both. In short, live-in caregivers live full-time, meaning at least five nights a week, but usually seven, with the adult with a developmental disability, and they provide daily care and support based upon the needs of that person with a disability. They could be a caregiver all by themselves, or part of a broader support team that brings services into the home of the person with a disability. They can help with activities like personal care, bathing, dressing, etc., activities of independent living, things like making meals, completing chores. They can be companions, and they can provide some very minor health supports. Live-in caregivers can go by a lot of names. For the purposes of this grant, it can interchangeably be used with the terms live-in aid, live-in, live-in staff, and other similar terms. We'll talk about in a future webinar the specific use of the term live-in aid by the Department of Housing and Urban Development in certain categories of special requests, but for the most part these terms are entirely interchangeable. Live-in caregivers are paid differently depending upon the situation under which they're employed. So they may be paid with one or a combination of a few payment methods, one being Medicaid waivers. Please see our online toolkits for lots more information about Medicaid waivers. In short, this is a bundle of supports in a funding stream so a person with a disability can get supports in their home and community. You can use your waiver to hire staff to perform a range of functions. You could also privately pay, meaning use a special needs trust, ABLE account, cash, or other on-hand resources to pay directly for the care and aid provides. You can also pay all or a portion of the aid's time, depending upon your circumstances, with free rent. Look for the webinars later in this series on the Fair Exchange of Work for Lodging and the Fair Labor Standards Act to look at that in more detail. Does using a live-in aid make you a landlord, employer, or both? You are only becoming a landlord if you own the property and are responsible for managing the property. So for example, if you, the person with a disability, owned a home and had a live-in caregiver move in with you, then you would be the landlord. But if you had a housing voucher and you were renting an apartment and that live-in caregiver came to live in a second bedroom in that apartment with you, the landlord is still the landlord for the whole apartment complex. If you are involved in any way in recruiting, hiring, training, managing, paying, or firing the live-in caregiver, you're likely at least what's called a joint employer, meaning you have some employer responsibilities. If you do those things exclusively, you're the sole employer, meaning the only person employing the live-in caregiver. Make sure you check out the ARC of Northern Virginia's website, thearcofnova.org, Ask us questions anytime at thearcofnova.org slash answers. You visit our YouTube channel. You check out our guides for services and supports across the lifespan, especially our guide on finding a home and utilizing live-in caregivers, where there's a guide both for people with disabilities and families looking at this option and a parallel guide for the caregivers themselves. Again, these webinars will parallel the information in those guides and is just another way to take in what can be a really complicated topic. Thank you for joining us.